Hello and welcome to another Grandstream tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to configure VLANs on the Grandstream networking and UC solutions. Throughout this tutorial, we will demonstrate VLAN configuration on the GWN router, switch, and access point. We will also explain the different methods to assign voice VLAN to endpoints such as IP phones. Throughout this tutorial, we will use this network diagram as a reference for the configuration that we will implement on the router, switch, and access point. In this configuration, we will segment the network into three VLANs to simplify the network management and to reduce the size of broadcast domains. This will also help us create inter-VLAN routing policies on the router and implement quality of service to voice traffic. To implement this network diagram, the GWN router must be configured with the network parameters for VLANs 20 and 30. For security purposes, the router must be configured to block devices on the guest network from reaching devices on the voice and data VLANs. The same VLAN IDs must be added on the GWN switch before they can be configured on any port. On the GWN access point, three SSIDs will be created to serve wireless clients for each VLAN. First, log into the web interface of the GWN router, go to Network Settings, and click LAN. Under the VLAN tab, we click Add to create VLANs 20 and 30. We start with VLAN 20, which is the voice network. We fill in the network parameters for this VLAN, such as the name and the IP address of the router together with the subnet mask. We will enable DHCP service to allow the router to assign IP addresses to connected devices from the DHCP address pool that we specify in the allocation range. Define the IP address of the DNS server for connected clients. In addition, the DHCP service can be configured to assign additional network parameters using DHCP options. For instance, Grandstream IP phones use option 66 to request information about the TFTP server for provisioning. If you need to configure the router to include option 66 in the DHCP offer, specify the option number and the IP address of the TFTP server. For this example, we will not use DHCP options, so we will just leave it blank. There are no restrictions on voice VLAN to access the internet and devices in other VLANs, so we will keep the destination option set to all. Next, we create VLAN 30 for the guest network. This VLAN will be primarily used with a guest SSID to provide Wi-Fi access to guests. We will define the VLAN ID and fill in the rest of the network parameters. One of the requirements is to block devices on this VLAN from reaching devices and services in other VLANs. Basically, this VLAN should have access to the internet only. For that, we use the destination feature. Instead of selecting all, we will choose only the wide area network interface and remove access to other VLANs. Now that the router has been configured with the VLANs needed for our setup, let's log into the web interface of the switch to set up VLAN membership on the ports. Go to Switching Submenu and click VLAN. Under the VLAN tab, we need to add the VLAN IDs before they can be assigned to any ports. The VLAN IDs must match the ones created on the router. So, we'll go ahead and add VLANs 20 and 30. When you edit any of these VLANs, you get the option to name the VLAN to easily identify the VLANs added in the switch. We'll change the name of this one to Data VLAN. VLAN-enabled ports are generally categorized in one of two member types tagged or untagged. If you set a port to untagged, you make the port accept untagged traffic on this particular VLAN only. This also specifies the port VLAN ID to use for the untagged traffic entering that switch port. By default, all ports are configured with untagged VLAN 1 as shown here. If you connect a host that is not configured with a VLAN tag, it will be automatically placed on VLAN 1. In this configuration, the IP phones and the IP PBX should connect to VLAN 20. So, you need to go to the configuration page of VLAN 20 and set ports 1, 11, and 23 to untagged. On the other hand, when a port is configured with tagged, entering traffic must be tagged with the assigned VLAN. For instance, if you set port 2 to tagged, the device that connects to this port must tag traffic with VLAN 20, otherwise, the traffic will be placed on the default VLAN 1. Usually, ports are set to tagged mode on trunk ports that link routers, switches, 
access points, and IP phones with tagged Voice VLAN. On this switch, the ports that link the router and the access point will be tagged with VLAN 20. So those will be ports 2 and 22. These same ports need to be tagged with VLAN 30 as well. So we'll go ahead and do that under VLAN 30 configuration page. You can change the port type just by clicking the port icon. T means the VLAN is sent on that port with the 802.1Q tag. A port with U indicates the port is a member of that VLAN. A blank port means the port is not a member of the selected VLAN. Under the Port Settings tab, all the ports are set to Trunk Mode by default. If you need to change the port type to Access Mode instead of Trunk Mode, select the port and click the Edit icon. By changing the link type of port 11 to Access, you force the port to only accept traffic on VLAN 20. While Access Mode can only carry traffic for a single VLAN, Trunk Mode must be used when multiple VLANs are configured on a single port. For this network diagram which uses multiple VLANs, switch ports 2 and 22 should not be set to Access Mode. It is important they use Trunk Mode. The Port Members tab displays the VLAN parameters applied to each switch port. You can use this page to review the changes that have been made under the VLAN and Port Settings tabs. You can also use this page to define the VLANs allowed on a particular trunk port. After completing the VLAN configuration on the router and the switch, we need to log into the web interface of the access point to add the SSIDs associated with each VLAN. All GWN access points come pre-configured with a default SSID and a random password that is printed on the barcode label. If you leave the default SSID enabled, anyone with physical access to the GWNAP can obtain the password for Wi-Fi access. For this reason, we will disable the default SSID. We start with adding the office SSID for the data VLAN. Next, we add one for the voice VLAN. This will use VLAN 20. To improve the roaming experience of mobile devices, we can enable Voice Enterprise. The third SSID is for the guest VLAN, which uses the VLAN ID 30. There is a security feature that we can enable for the guest SSID to prevent wireless clients from communicating with one another. This security feature is client isolation. With client isolation enabled, wireless clients will only be able to communicate with the internet and will not be able to communicate with any other devices on the same VLAN. The implementation of this network diagram is now complete and the configuration changes we've made will ensure that VLAN traffic will be properly segregated and devices will connect on their intended VLANs. In the next chapter, we will dive deeper into the different methods used to assign ports to voice VLAN. In the previous chapter, we manually assign ports to their intended VLAN. This approach can be used when you have a single device using a single port, which makes it possible to set up quality of service on per interface basis. However, this method might not be practical for a situation where you have an IP phone and an attached computer both connected to the same switch port as shown in this image. If we set up quality of service to a port that is used by an IP phone and a computer, the switch will prioritize both data and voice traffic using the same class priority and this defeats the purpose of prioritizing the forwarding of voice traffic over data traffic. In this chapter, we cover the five different methods of voice VLAN configuration to isolate voice traffic from data traffic. This will also allow us to apply quality of service to voice traffic. The first method of configuring voice VLAN relies on LLDP, which stands for Link Layer Discovery Protocol. This method works with voice devices that support LLDP, Basically, LLDP provides a mechanism for a switch to inform an IP phone of the VLAN number that it should use. If you want to learn about LLDP configuration on the GWN switches, please refer to the link in the description section below. 
These are the steps you need to follow to configure Voice VLAN on a switch port using LLDP. We will use Gigabit port 17 for this configuration example. Go to the VLAN tab and edit Voice VLAN. Set port 17 to tagged and apply the change. It is important to tag the ports with Voice VLAN if you need to use LLDP for Voice VLAN configuration. We can verify the configuration under port members. It is showing Gigabit port 17 has the port VLAN ID 1 for untagged traffic and VLAN ID 20 for tagged traffic. Next, go to the LLDP configuration page to add a network policy for this implementation. Select the voice application and enter the VLAN ID for voice. Under the VLAN configuration page, we configured the Gigabit port 17 with tagged VLAN 20. For the class of service in DSCP, we will use the values 6 and 46 respectively. To learn about the meaning of these values and the configuration of quality of service on the GWN switches, please refer to the link in the description below. Now we need to assign the network policy to Gigabit port 17. Edit the port. Toggle the option for network policy TLV and select the network policy what we just created. After you reboot the phone, it should grab an IP address from the voice VLAN while the connected computer should connect to data VLAN. It is important to note that this method works only with devices that support LLDP. LLDP can also be used to assign untagged voice VLAN. You can use the same steps explained in the first method, except that the port type must be changed to hybrid mode to support untagged traffic from two VLANs on the same port. So go to VLAN, Port Settings and Edit Gigabit Port 17. Change the link type from Trunk to Hybrid. So while Trunk mode supports a single untagged VLAN and multiple tagged VLANs, Hybrid mode supports multiple untagged and tagged VLANs. We also need to make changes to the LLDP network policy. Add a new network policy and choose Untag this time. Then, assign it to Gigabit port 17 and click OK. The Auto Voice VLAN assignment using LLDP simplifies the process of setting up Voice VLAN on a particular port. This method eliminates the need to change the port type to trunk or hybrid, as we did in the previous methods. Instead, it will automatically change the link type of the port based on what is configured in the LLDP network policy. To use this method, go to the Voice VLAN tab and enable Auto Voice VLAN. Select the VLAN ID and define the class of service and DSCP values. Then, click OK. Next, we go to the LLDP configuration page to assign a network policy to Gigabit port 19 this time. For this method, Auto Voice Network Policy must be enabled before you add and assign a network policy to a port. If it is disabled, Auto Voice VLAN will not take effect. Also, if you have any network policy that uses voice application, you must remove it first before you enable Auto Voice Network Policy. So just remove the existing ones and add a new network policy. As you may notice, after we enabled Auto Voice Network Policy, voice application is no longer available. Instead, we will use voice signaling application for this network policy. The benefit of using Auto Voice VLAN is that it eliminates the need to tag the port under the VLAN setting. It automatically changes the link type of the port based on how this option is configured in the LLDP network policy. Click OK. Next, apply this network policy to Gigabit port 19. Now, if you go back to the VLAN configuration page and under the Port Members tab, you will notice that Gigabit 19 is now configured with tagged VLAN 20. This is done dynamically after you connect an IP phone. The fourth method relies on the OUI or, or Organizational Unique Identifier, which is the six-byte field of the MAC address that identifies the vendor. If you go to the OUI tab, you will find the list of some known VoIP devices vendors, including Grandstream. If the vendor you are using is not listed here, just click Add and enter the six leading bytes of the MAC address. 
After you add the vendor OUI of the devices you need to place in the Voice VLAN, go to the Voice VLAN tab and select Untagged OUI. This method is ideal for a situation where you have connected devices that do not support LLDP. The switch will automatically place the connected devices on the Voice VLAN just based on the vendor's MAC address identifier. So for this method, LLDP network policy is not needed. Using this method, the switch will automatically place the port in the Voice VLAN when it receives a packet with a source MAC address that matches an entry in the OUI list. If the switch does not receive traffic from the connected device with the MAC address within the aging duration, the switch automatically removes the port from the Voice VLAN. After you enable the untagged OUI method, select the ports that you want to apply it to, edit, and toggle the status option. There are two modes to choose from, manual or auto. Let's set up an example with manual mode. Two things that need to be configured on the switch port when using manual mode. First, the port must be configured with untagged voice VLAN under the VLAN configuration page. Second, go to the port settings tab and change the link type to hybrid. Now, if you connect a device with a MAC address in the OUI list, it will be placed automatically in the voice VLAN. If the connected device has a MAC address that is not in the OUI list, the switch will place the port in the default VLAN instead. If we set the mode to auto, the only thing we need to change is the link type. You need to make sure it is set to hybrid. Tagging or untagging port is not needed when using auto mode. The last method to cover in this chapter is voice VLAN configuration using tagged OUI. This method works with VoIP devices that support VLAN tag configuration. With this method, you can set the link type of the port to either hybrid or trunk. Either one should work. So you need to select the ports that you want to apply it to. Edit and toggle the status option. You can use auto mode so you don't need to go to the VLAN configuration page and tag the port. Next, log into the web interface of the phone and add the VLAN tag to the network settings. Find the setting that allows you to configure the VLAN tag and the 802.1p for class of service. Remember, with tagged OUI, the device MAC address must match one of the entries in the OUI list. This concludes today's video guide about VLAN configuration. Stay tuned for more video guides about the GWN networking solutions.